Hey man, I got that new TMX Thrustmaster wheel. It's going down. <laughs> Xbox One? I can't wait to play when I get home. Yo, let me play. Uh, yeah. So I play first. Yeah. You know, I'll race for it. So I have a hand. A good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the eighth round of the Formula Sim Racing World Championship Series sponsored by Thrustmaster. We are here live at the Hockenheim track. Let's take a look at the track information indeed. So we have got uh, the Hockenheim track coming up indeed for this uh, eighth round. It's the German Grand Prix of course uh, consequently. So, the Hockenheim Grand Prix track is uh, 4.57 kilometers long. So, not the longest track we have uh, we have on the circuit, uh, on the calendar, I should say. Race distance will be 67 laps. So, quite a lot of laps for this uh, kind of uh, half-high speed circuit. With some slow corners in it as well. Uh, past winners here have been Jeroen Kwiekel last year, of course, for origin front row Mohammed Patel has won here in 2015 and the year before that Morgan Moran for Netrex weather forecast at the moment seems like it's not going to rain it's a small chance about 10% and the humidity is 59% at the moment air temp 22 degrees so not very cold not very hot as well but it should make for some nice racing Something to note, it has rained um, about 30 minutes to an hour ago, just shortly. So there was some rain on the track, but it has all dried up now. So let's go to the game. So here we are then. The drivers are just in the qualifying session. And let me introduce my co-commentators for today. My name is Felix van Delft. And of course, I'm joined by David O'Reilly and also Sergi Eras for today. Hi, Felix. Hi, Sergi. Great to be here. Thanks for the welcome. Yeah, it's great having you here, both of you. Um, so the qualifying session is on the way. How are the guys doing at the moment, guys? Well, Risto Caput's, um he's put a pretty solid banker in of 15.5. Um, Maguire was the quickest in practice with a, about a 15.036. So there's more time to find. Of course, the track's going to rubber in. Uh, Maguire uh, is on an outlap at the moment. Yeah, I see Michele is on a hot lap. He's just in sector two at the moment. 
looks uh, quite uh, nice and tight. First sector wasn't the best. Second sector seems to be uh, not too bad. 35.4, quickest of the session so far. Now coming into the stadium section. It's difficult to get this section right. You can understeer or oversteer easily off the track. And the curbs are also not too forgiving. You can see here on the outside. There's an anti-cut if you touch that. Your lap is definitely over. However, Michele D'Alessandro is coming to the line. What is it going to be for him? It's going to be a 115.1. Very nice lap time for him indeed. And It's nice now. to have a full half a second buffer between him and uh, the current P2. Yeah, definitely. It is and provisional pole position for him. Still 16 minutes remaining, of course, in this qualifying session. Adam Maguire just exiting uh, sector one. I'll just keep an eye out for his. Watch uh, Luke. Luke first sector and second sector. The oh yes, by purple and both. Oh, here we go. The anti-cut. I just told you, and he touches it and goes into the wall. That's uh, his qualifying lap over. It was going to be pole position, I think, but uh, well, not anymore. Well, yesterday in ACE, both Maguire brothers pushed it really to the limit and beyond in qualifying. I think Adam completed two time laps and Luke only completed one. So they absolutely get into quality mode, these guys, and go to the limit. Yep, that is uh, indeed how they seem to drive it at the moment. So Adam Maguire is on his hot lap at the moment and... Gets very close to the anti-cut now. Coming to the line. A little bit of oversteer on the exit of the last corner. Oh, and, and he's... Uh, that is one thousandth of a second slower than his best lap in practice. One thousandth of a second. He did a 15.036 in practice. He's done a 15.037 in his uh, first time lap. I wouldn't say that is too bad. No, that's a, that's a strong lap. We did get high 14s in, in pro, I think a 14.7. And the track, of course, another 14 minutes to go. The track's going to rubber in more. Yeah, definitely. The track is going to be rubbing in even more because also it rained in the uh, beginning of the session. Oh, Eros Masculi has just taken pole with a 14.936. Wow, that's a good lap time from Eros. With a really strong sector two time. Not a spectacular sector three, so he might be running low wing. No, not spectacular, not particularly. 309 top speed. Yeah. There's some interesting guys as well. I mean, um, just saying that we have a couple of replacement drivers for today. Um, for example, Daniel Kish is not driving and he's being replaced by world champion Peter Briljak. Definitely not the least here on the grid. Um, no, indeed. Um, <laughs> not, 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 not a bad reserve driver to have, you might <laughs> say. No, definitely not. And as I say that, he puts himself... Oh, wait, he's still driving. Never mind. Um, for Go Speed, we have got Christoph Skour driving uh, for a replacement for... Um, who is he replacing? Can't see... Blair Disley. He's replacing Briac Blair Disley. has done a strong Sector 1, actually. Yeah, indeed. 16-6. And who else is replacing? Duke McGuire and is replacing James a Sofa. good Sector 2, as good as Masculi's Sector 2. So if Briak puts together a, a good final sector, and he's exited Sachs looking strong, Briak may well put it on pole with his first, uh, first attempt. Here we go. A little bit of overstay on the exit. Oh, almost. Nine. Almost 22,000. 200s and 2,000s uh, outside. So he can't be too rusty then. Definitely not. I mean, Briak, of course, a legend of FSR. Pro champion in 2014, ace champion in 2015, world champion in 2016. Yep, exactly how I think oh, most sorry, drivers I would that, like to oh, do One it. year out, 2013, 2014, 2015. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, stood out last year, of course, and... Um, of course, not 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 to forget to mention, he also took part in the Formula E uh, Championship, Las Vegas uh, Championship, uh, a couple of months ago, two three months ago, um, a little bit more in January. I was. It was oh I yeah, believe. where did Peter end up in that? Yeah, Peter uh, got uh, got to the top. Top guys, he went to Vegas. He drove, I believe, with the um, 
with the Renault guys. Uh, could be wrong, or with the Jaguar, one of the two. Uh, <coughs> unfortunately, he didn't get through the uh, through the qualifying because of a incident with some other driver, so he couldn't race for the real money. But he still got uh, got some fair about a fa fair amount of money with that competition, and I think he is uh, not complaining about it. Yeah, I think anybody who got to go to Vegas got won twenty five thousand mm dollars, -hmm. I believe. At least twenty thousand for ev for anyone. So yeah, that's big money. <laughs> Big money in sim racing. Definitely. But of course, our real legend, Bono House, won there. And I think he got like more than 200k. Yeah, 250,000, yeah. I think. Yeah, Bono, uh, Bono House, legendary Formula Sim Racing, five time world champion. And uh, yeah, according to that competition, anyway, the best sim racer in the world. Yeah, definitely. Somebody Another one of our alum, uh, alumni, of course, is Stoffel van Dorn. If any of the viewers are wondering what the driving standards are here, uh, Stoffel van Dorn, who is currently Fernando Alonso's teammate in McLaren, was a Formula Sim racing driver three or four seasons ago and managed a career best of P3 in this competition. So the standards here are incredibly high. These guys on track are the best in the world at, uh, at what they do. Yep. I'm just watching Adam Maguire at the moment. He's on for a reasonably good lap. First sector, very quick, 16.534. Now coming through the last sector, seemed like a good sector. Here we go, Adam Maguire. Ball position for him at the moment, 114.521. More than three tenths quicker than Martin Gosby at this point in time. And there's only 10 minutes remaining in the session. Well, Adam Maguire is certainly is just getting, getting faster and faster. He drove a, a very... Um, courageous race uh, in a wet ace race yesterday to finish second really tough tough drive full wet the whole 67 laps so i think the car's probably feeling pretty nice to him on a dry track at the minute yeah definitely um let's see uh, some somebody i want to mention as well rudy van buren at the moment in seventh position he is second race in the fsr championship uh, world Championship. He drove an ace as well. The first race he drove an ace, he won by about uh, 12 points to the second place finisher, Mr. Felix van Delft. Don't know who that is, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> anyway, um, he uh, he's uh, come from another league in our factor, GP uh, VWC. Uh, he's been dominating there quite a lot. Let's see what he can do. I'm really curious to see what he can do here in the World Championship of Formula Sim Racing. Because I know he's a quick driver. But can he be as quick as the top drivers here in FSR? Uh, at the moment looking at better Peter Briljak coming through the Sucks curve at the moment. A little bit of oversteer on the exit. Mm. At the moment, two and a half tenths down on his own time. So he either has to get a really good last sector here or not. Oh, it's a good last sector, but just not enough for a uh, improvement on his time. So at the moment, he has to accept sixth position. But he still he still has got three, tie, three tries left in this session. The guy with the fastest car in terms of straight line speed is uh, Mohamed Patel, uh, lying uh, currently in provisional P2. His top speed is 319.8 kilometers an hour. He's got 10 Ks advantage on most of the other guys and 13 kilometer an hour advantage on Adam Maguire. So Adam Maguire will need to pull a gap or, or uh, well, assuming they started in this order. Adam Maguire would need to pull a gap or, or Mohamed Patel is just going to monster him down the uh, main straight. It's an incredible race last year here between Mohamed Patel and Peter Briak, between the two teammates. Very close battle for the, for the whole duration of the race. Yep. So, who is going to be able to challenge the top driver at the moment, Adam Maguire? Mohamed Patel is just in the second sector now. Coming through the long right-hander. Difficult to get that corner right. Now, a little bit of understeer on the steer one here through Saxon curve. A um, bit of oversteer as well. Doesn't seem like the best last sector for Patel here. It's 
gonna be difficult. He had a strong him. sector two. Yeah, true. But is it gonna be enough? Oh, it's he's enough improved ever so slightly. But it's not enough for. He's position. going for another lap, I think. I oh, know he's. Nah, he's ju he just doesn't want to park the car at the uh, at the bad place there, I guess. Right, Michi Hoyer is going quick. Michi Hoyer is going very quick through the first two sectors. I think he abandoned his lap. I think he knew he cut the track there. Ah, that's too bad. His first sector was not uh, too shabby, about as quick as Mashuli, but his second sector was quicker than Mashuli. Also, Michi Hoyer, I think, is somebody to really look out for. He got a second place, I believe, last race. Well, indeed, uh, and his teammates were all thrilled. That was his first podium let alone uh, P2 in uh, World Championship. Yeah. Michi, of course, uh, the, uh, the 2016 ace champion, so moved up to World Championship and he's now with the, the biggest and meanest and fastest drivers that, that are around. So big step up for him and he was a very, very thrilled to get uh, second place in Silverstone two weeks ago. Daniel Kiss, of course, fought him the whole way to the line and there was about two tenths of a second between them as they crossed the line battling for second place so that was a, a wonderful result for Michi yeah I'm just watching on board with Martin Gosby at the moment quick in the first and second sector could be pole position looking at the sector times it's just the last sector that matters now for him turns it in nicely a little bit of understeer and the cut touches it but he keeps it in a straight line it won't help his lap time surely coming to the line no indeed loses Didn't go any faster Loses about half a second there on the anti-cuts. That last sector is so tricky. You were mentioning it before because there's, there's a bit of a crown in the road. So you can go from quite a nice camber on the sax curb. But if you get your entry wrong and pop up onto the onto Ooh. the crown of the road, you've suddenly not got that camber anymore. Or if you're on a bad line, you've got adverse camber. So the, the yep. car is really moving around under you a lot, depending on which part of the track you're on there. Very <laughs> tricky. Michele D'Alessandro just put in a very nice lap. Uh, puts himself in second in the gap between Patel and Maguire. And as I say that, I'm just watching Stefanko because he went quickest in the second sector, purple. First sector wasn't the best, but it's good enough to, I think, put himself yeah. close to the top three. Here we go. Coming to the line. Last sector is going to be crucial. It's going to be seventh. So that last sector, not the best. And Daniel Brewer put in a purple last sector and got to sixth place. So it's all still to fight for for these guys. Rudy van Buren improves into 10th place. And at the moment, nobody else on a hot lap, I believe. Eros Mashuli is on a hot lap. He just started his first sector. First sector, not too bad. Just a couple of hundreds slower than Adam Maguire's pole position time at the moment. He's breaking right after the 100 meter board here for the hairpin. Turns it in nicely. Just misses the apex a little bit. On the power he goes nice and early. Now wants to take as much track as possible. Turning it in over the curb and breaking as late as possible. Just after that curb you saw there. Turning it in on the power nice and early again. Little lift here on the power again in fourth gear. Now lining it up for the right hander entry to the stadium section in the third sector. A little bit of oversteer there. Now through sex curve. Uh, doesn't look too good in this uh, last sector. The second sector wasn't too bad but also not the best. Let's see what he can do. A little bit of oversteer. This is not going to help. Here we go. Coming to the line. It's enough for an improvement. But it's not enough for pole position. And looking from Lopez now. He's replacing Jim Parises. He improves himself to 7th position for now. So we've got 2.5 minutes remaining basically in this session. And... We have basically every driver still able to do a hot lap. So I think it's going to get crowded in the last minutes of this uh, qualifying session. Indeed, I think Mishi Hoy is the only one that's going to have to sit it out because Mishi's done 10 laps. And to do, uh, to do an out lap, a hot lap and cross the line, that's uh, three laps. So Mishi's going to have to sit it out. But And uh, also Timu and Risto Caput. But everybody else has got another run. 
leaving it till the last moment with a minute and 47 left on the clock. It's a very pit, very busy pit lane now. So the most rubber on the track now, but sometimes butterflies can, uh, nerves can kind of uh, impact your final, final lash. Yeah, that's uh, definitely true. Of course, these are the world championship drivers. We would expect them to be made of steel nerves. Uh, of course. Let's see, Maguire is going to start his lap to defend his pole position time. Timo Fagliari hasn't put in a uh, very bad first or uh, second sector, quickest of the day. He's down in 16th position at the moment though. Moves himself up to 12th. Now I'm watching Adam Maguire. First sector not the best. Luke Maguire, his brother, Luke's has got, got a sector purple. one. Yep. Rudy van Buren has got an improvement in the first sector for himself. Not a purple one, but let's see what he can do as well. It's gonna get pop, pop, pop in the end of this lap. A lot of guys starting their laps as well now, so it's gonna get very interesting. Eris Masuli now quickest in the first sector. Adam Maguire, second sector coming up. You think Luke Maguire could be on for a good lap here? Yeah, He's Adam. in 35 3 at Adam makes the, the mistake sector. again on the exit of that corner. And that's his qualifying over. Is he going to be able to defend his pole position now? Is it enough? Is that 43 thousandths of a second enough to defend off Peter Briljak? To defend off Mashuli? To defend off Michele D'Alessandro? Or Patel for uh, that matter? Here we go. Second sector Mashuli. Very good. This is... If the last sector is also just as good as he can do. It's going to be a pole position lap. Just a little brush of the anti-cuts there. Here we go. Coming to the line. Eros Mashuli takes no pole position. Fourth place for him now. But one to fourth. First to fourth place is all within one tenth. Yeah, Mark that's, Patel now. Coming that's to incredible the line. close gap. No improvement for Patel. Michele D'Alessandro. Coming to the line now. He needs a lot of time. No. Abandons the lap. Then we have... Briljak, no, also not. Rudy van Buren, also not. Only Martin Stefanko left. He's on a good first and second sector. It's just the last sector for him. Here we go. Coming to the line. Martin Stefanko. Will it be Paul? No, fifth place for him. Last sector as well. So it is Adam Maguire on pole position here for the eighth round of the Formula Sim Racing World Championship. Michele D'Alessandro, Mohamed Patel and Eros Mashuli all got within one tenth. And even between Patel and Mashuli there is only a thousandth of a second. So it is extremely close here in qualifying. And this is only going to get more interesting in the race session. Yeah, mega close qualifying. I was looking at uh, Luke Maguire's lap. He finished his lap with a, a pretty respectable 15.1. and uh, But that was 0.6 of a second off pole. That landed him in 17th place. So incredibly uh, small margins. Fairly short lap, of course. But a lot of work. Very technical circuit. How, how do you find this circuit to drive, uh, it's Felix? A, it's, it's a very difficult circuit to be quick on. Um... But also, it's a very harsh circuit on the tires if you don't manage them well. I mean, a lot of fast corners, turn 1 is quick, turn 12 is quick, last corner is medium to quick, a lot of scrubbing of the tires if you go too quick on the entry. Um, so, it's hard for the tires, it's easy to make a mistake, and when you make a mistake, you often either end up in a barrier or on the grass and lose a lot of time. So, yeah... Um, we're going to see who has got the biggest balls, who has got the biggest nerves, and who will be the quickest here. Warm-up session is just uh, beginning now. Uh, people, uh, people who've been watching Formula One for many, many years in our audience will remember the old Hockenheim ring, which uh, <clears throat> was used until the year 2000, and it was 2.3 kilometers longer. So it was just really a long blast out into the forest and back. Yep. And not nearly so technical, more of a 
just an absolute, you know, flat out, flat out uh, blast through the forest with a couple of chicanes. One named after Jim Clark, which was actually put there um, after his uh, tragic uh, fatality in '65. But the Hockenheim Ring only got its first Grand Prix in 1970 when the drivers banned uh, the Nordschleife. Because prior to 1970, they were running Formula One cars around the, the, the Nord circuit of the Nordschleife. So that's when uh, the Hockenheim Ring um, came into being. But from 2002, this has been the new track, very much more technical. It's rock and roll. You get a few seconds to rest uh, down the long straight um, to the hairpin, but the rest of the time you're either in an acceleration zone or pitching the car into a corner or braking uh, and there is no let up it is uh, rock and roll for, for the for most of the lap yep yeah indeed so um let's just uh, take a look at the standings in the championship at the current moment in time of course after last round in silverstone um let's see of course, we uh, last race was won by Martin Gosby. So let's first take a look at the driver standings. So indeed, Mohamed Patel is still leading. Gap has closed a little bit to Martin Gosby. Johnny Simicic is not driving today, so that's not going to help him. Um, he's in third, but uh, no points for him today. Daniel Kish is also not driving in fourth. Uh, Michi Hoyer in 5th will be driving, so he will be gaming, gaining some time on the two drivers in front of him. Martin Stefanko, same goes for him. Then Lars Brookman uh, is also not driving today, I think he is replaced by Rudy Van Buren. Uh, then it's Michele D'Alessandro, so he will be gaining points as well compared to Lars Brookman, if he finishes the race at least. Then Daniel Brewer in ninth and closing the top 10 here in the drivers championship at the moment it is michael francesconi so let's take a look at the team standings then of course musto racing still very strong more than 50 points of a lead to flag to flag bram gp um then after that it is go speed racing who are now on pole position with adam mcguire and luke mcguire also looking very competitive let's see what they can do in the constructors today Evert Connick Racing in 4th place, Stormcharge Votboe Racing in 5th, Trustmaster Twister Racing very close to Stormcharge in 6th, then Invictus in 7th, Ghost Speed Engineering and Netrex have the same amount of points, so basically share 8th place at the moment, and then it is Phoebe Metcape in 10th, and still without any points at the moment, born to win in 11th. Right, so... It's going to be a, a very interesting day today. I think a lot of replacement drivers. Um, I mean, I've said it already. Peter Briljak, Mathieu Mlinek. Sorry if I mispronounce anything. Rudy Van Buren. Uh, Fran, uh, not, not Fran Lopez. Um, Christoph Skor. Uh, Luke McGuire. Harley Hamnet. Dave Paling. Mart uh, uh, not Martin Gosby. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of replacement drivers. Let's see how they do. I mean, yep. one nice in opportunity. Position. Nice opportunity for them to get their feet wet in in World Championship. And you mentioned there Gosby winning last time out. For any of our viewers that haven't seen uh, the broadcast or the or the YouTube video of the broadcast of Silverstone from two weeks ago, it is well worth a look. It was an absolute thriller on a wet but drying track. Gosby, I think, was sixth or seventh on the grid, but started on primes and ran long and was having a mighty battle. Uh, Fran Lopez uh, was leading but blew his engine, just went too far with radiator size. Yep. And Hoyer and Kiss fought to the line for P2, so it was Gosby, Hoyer and Daniel Kiss. But absolutely thrilling race. The, the weather threw the cards all up in the air once again. So, yeah, um, it's going to be a... Uh interesting race i think just taking a look at the weather forecast now um i don't think it's uh, going to rain today yeah it looks like it's going to cool down a little bit during the um during the the next hour and a half but currently 21 degrees or so and yep. it's going to steadily drop as we get into the late afternoon but it looks like it's going to stay dry yes indeed so i think some drivers will be happy about that maybe some drivers will be 
a little bit, well, sad, I don't know, but maybe they, if they had some rain, they would have been further up the field, they think, but I don't know. What, 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 what are your thoughts on tyres? Uh, Sergi, have you got any thoughts on tyre strategy, what the guys, what most of the guys will try to do? I think most of the guys below top 10 will start with primes, trying the overcut maybe. And probably, as we saw in, in pro race, uh, to stop will be most of the strategies chosen by the drivers. Yeah, yeah. of course the fuel loads uh, have to take a, those in, into account as well here. To stop, you will have a little bit more fuel on your option stints. And if you go double option, you will have a little bit more fuel on your option stints. Uh, and also on your prime stint, of course, if you go two stop. But if you go three stop, you will have less fuel uh, overall. Uh, maybe be a bit quicker, but you have to make another stop. So it's it's a difficult yeah, choice. Yeah, it's, it's an intriguing one. It's a tempting one to do the extra stop because it's a lot of laps. You know, when you do the maths, you don't, you've only got to be a couple of tenths quicker, uh, 67 times, to pay for a pit. So if you're running slightly less fuel, um, yep. you will be that little bit quicker. But you don't want to drop yourself back behind people. So, it's again, it's very, very difficult to, to pass here. So, in certainly uh, the, the options are good for 20 laps. Yeah, definitely. However, uh, it is time to go for a little break. We will be right back with you in about uh, five minutes max. Uh, two, three minutes about. So, um, just keep in here. Maybe grab a cup of coffee. Get ready for the race because it's going to be an interesting one. Hey man, I got that new TMX Thrustmaster wheel. It's going down. <laughs> Xbox One? I can't wait to play when I get home. Yo, let me play? Uh, yeah. I'll so play first. Yeah. You know, I'll race for it. So I have a hand.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The warm-up session is over. The guys are getting ready on the grid. And we are getting ready to get racing here for 67 laps on the Hockenheim circuit. The drivers are rolling off the grid. Once again, I would like to introduce myself. And of course, my co-commentators, Dave, er, David O'Reilly and Sergi Heras. Right, guys. So... Uh, could one of you maybe take us through the uh, the grid? Yeah, absolutely. I might just mention too. We're here. This uh, for any new viewers. This is Formula Sim Racing. This is the absolute pinnacle of sim racing uh, in the R Factor Two simulation, which we use here using real live weather. And as the guys take us round for their formation lap, uh, Adam McGuire has pole. Uh, with a stunning performance. Michele D'Alessandro joins him on row two. Mohamed Patel and Eros Masculi um, uh, take up row two. Martin Stefanko and Peter Briak um, occupying row three. Rudy Van Buren and Daniel Brewer on row four. Martin Gosby, the winner from the last race uh, on row five, accompanied by Christoph Schoer. Timo Valkiavi uh, and Mishi Hoyer occupying row six. Mishi was a podium place last uh, race last time out. And then Florian Becker, Giordano Valiano on row seven. Luke Maguire and uh, Marseille Milnek, apologies if I got that wrong, on row eight. Followed by John Eric Saxon, Risto Caput, Harley Hammett, Dave Paling. And Fran Lopez, uh, who I think is taken aback of the grid penalty because he disqualified him, his own lap due to track limits in quali. So I, th I think you can't do that anymore this year. Last year you could indeed say to the race director, I want to get a back of the grid because I cut, but I think you can't do this anymore. I'm not sure. Um, I did see some chat from the server. Could be. Okay, could yeah, be wrong. We'll confirm that later be. on. So as they uh, arrive into their grid slots, hopefully with the tyres um, uh, and brakes hot, but the engine's not too hot, I'll hand over to Felix to, uh, to call the start. Yeah, and sure, welcome to all man. our viewers. So, last of the drivers getting ready in their grid slots. Going to be a interesting race. We've said it multiple times now already. But Adam Maguire is on pole position today. It is going to be an interesting day. We've got five lights and we are racing here for 67 laps. It's a good start for Maguire. Mikhail Alessandro has to defend from his teammate or his sister teammate, Mohamed Patel. But he keeps it in front coming into turn one. A little bit of contact there. I see Martin Gosby on the outside of turn one. But it is still leading here for Adam Maguire. Everybody coming through turn two nicely there. But he still has got his front wings. And it seems that it's been a fairly clean start here for the race. Yeah, very clean start. Uh, a nice beginning. Because oh, here we go. Michele Alessandro starts to attack Adam Maguire already for the first position here. He's very close. Oh, oh and there goes an Evictus car on the outside. However, I'm going to go on board with Michele D'Alessandro. He's going to try it around the outside here. A little bit of contact. Oh, Maguire pushes him by wide a little bit. And Mohamed Patel goes into that second position. So, a little bit of uh, contact there after that hairpin. I don't know exactly what happened. But let's stay with the action for now because I think... Uh, Michele is not done yet with uh, Mohamed at the moment. Yeah, I watched a replay of um, Maguire and Yelizandro uh, into the uh, curve at the Mercedes-Benz um, section there. 
And I think um, D'Alessandro was a bit optimistic going around the outside and Maguire just asserted his, his, his own right to the racing line, really. So uh, I don't think there was any foul pay from either one. Yeah. Of course, incidents happen, exact, especially at the beginning of such a race. And Hockenheim is definitely not a very wide track. Let's see, however, or, uh, Rudy van Buren is very close to Peter Brilliuk. But right in front of that, it is Eros Masuli with Stefanko battling side by side out of the exit of the hairpin. Let's see, it's Stefanko in front coming to the braking zone. Can Masuli do anything? No. So Stefanko takes the fourth place here in lap two of the race. I know Martin was very motivated to do well this week. He's, for one reason or another, not had great preparation for the previous couple of rounds and really wanted to lay down a marker this, this week. So I'm looking on board with Rudy van Buren. He is very close to... Peter Brilliak right in front of him. Adam McGuire puts in the quickest lap of the race. And already has a lead of more than a second. Here we go. Rudy van Buren out of turn one. Peter Brilliak with a little mistake. Rudy outbreaking him. Is he now side by side still out of turn two? This is going to get interesting. Rudy a little bit wide there on the exit. Keeps it in front. However, Peter will be having some slipstream now. He goes for the inside, coming to the hairpin. Who's going to be the latest to break? It's going to be still side by side. Who is going to be the one with the better exit? Seems that it is Rudy van Buren. So he takes the position for now. Right a little bit further back. We saw also some battling between a Ghost Speed car and an Invictus car. I think that is Brewer and Skuer. That was impressive driving by van Buren there to... Um fend off Briak. Briak had the apex, had the inside line, but uh, Van Buren was able to put it around the outside with whole position. Very impressive skills there. Yes, definitely. You see all the cars coming past there. Oh, you saw, I think that was Florian Becker. A bit aggressive on the back of Risto Kapet. Let's switch to that battle. A lot going on on track at the moment, so sorry if we miss any of the action. It's all getting a bit busy here, of course. 21 drivers. 21 of the top drivers here in FSR. They are not going to go easy on each other. Florian goes a little bit wide into turn one. And that allows Van Lopez to start attacking him into turn two. But can and he Martin fend him off? Is, is in the last position. He had a, uh, a contact with Giordano Valeriano. Okay, that's not uh, exactly what you want to happen. Let's see if I can... Uh, Find Ho Hoyer attacking Shoah into the hairpin for P9. Oh, they made a bit of contact there. Successful attack by uh, Hoyer. Hoyer, by the way, the first of the prime runners. So he's not doing too badly, really, to be working his way forward through the top 10 and on the slower tyre. So we might see a bit of action from Hoyer uh, around the pit stop window. Yeah, it seems that Patel, by the way, is closing the gap a little bit to Adam Maguire. Let's see, though, if I can get a quick replay of what happened to Martin Gosby. So, here we go. Coming into the left-hander of Sector 2. There was a little bit of contact with him there. Ooh, and then Valeriano cut him off a little bit, coming through the right-hander. And that dropped Martin all the way down to last position. So, Mohamed Patel starting to chase Adam Maguire. Yes, Patel had a purple lap last time round, 0.24 of a second quicker than Maguire. Yes, he is looking strong at the moment, but of course, you have to take into account the dirty air on these cars is pretty heavy. And especially through um, here yeah, the stadium entry, it can catch you out a little bit. But maybe the World Championship leader at the moment is able to 
I'll find a way around that to get closer and maybe make an attack. That last lap was a little bit slower for him. Now, any viewers, any of our viewers uh, watching the live stream, uh, we've got uh, three uh, commentators on duty today, so we can offer you the uh, opportunity if you want to use the hashtag AskFSR and ask us any questions. We will do our best to um, answer them for you um, as this race uh, pans out, the next 62 laps of this championship race here at Hockenheim. Yep. So, you said Florian Becker got the move done there on um, Risto Kappert in the slipstream. Good job from the Dutch driver. Ooh, and he makes a mistake now on the exit there. Watch out. Whew, loses a wing end plate, I think, there. Yes, he's, uh, he's, he's lost a part of his front wing. Yeah, and a lot of positions. Let's see if I can get a replay of that. I think uh, he did well to not crash it into any other cars. Of course, the cars around him did well to not crash into him. Let's take a quick replay of that. Actually, it might have been Lopez, uh, front left wing uh, in plate. So let's see. Florian Becker turning in there. Had a little bit of understeer on the entry, then touches the curb, goes wide, almost crashes again. Indeed, touches, I think, one of the Maguires, and then drops further down the order. Let's go back to live, though. Right, so his teammate now right in front of him, and let's tweak a little bit. Look forward, Luke McGuire makes the move on Risto Kappa now. Wherever you Lopez, Fran Lopez will try to capitalize on the wider line that uh, Risto Kappa had to take. This is still a very fierce battle with basically five, maybe six cars involved. And this is what we like to see here in the Formula Sim Racing World Championship. This is a very difficult situation for the drivers because when you're so close you have to be careful watching in front of you but also watching behind you. Yeah, 100% and the the key overtaking spots uh, here at this track are really quite high risk. You know, it's into the hairpin and into the um, Mercedes-Benz um, stand. They're the two corners where we'll probably see the most action, unless it's uh, an opportunity that comes up through driver error. Yeah. So, still a lot of action going on. So, Maguire now with 1.2 seconds gap to Patel. So, his pace is holding up nicely. I can't help but thinking Adam Maguire, after yesterday's wet ace race, is driving this car thinking, wow, this is easy in the, in the dry weather here at Hockenheim. <laughs> Right, so a battle for around P15, P16 is still very, very hot. Yeah, that's a massive train of cars, isn't it? Yep, definitely. And it's also now You've got, uh, who's going to get the best slip scene, who's going to get the least of dirty air, who can get a slightly different line. And here There's eight or nine cars occupying four seconds worth mm -hmm. of track there. Yep. Here we go, Hamnet. He's looking close. He's trying to scare maybe a little bit Risto Kappert in his rear view mirrors. But he himself also has to watch out for Florian Becker right behind him. Uh, Gosby is on options, so he really should have a chance to uh, make a move on some of these guys. The rest of them uh, seem to be all be on primes. Here we go, Gosby has got the slipstream, has got the top speed. Has he though, on the braking. He puts it next to him. Can he keep it in front on the exit of the corner? Yes, he can. Nice move there from Martin Gosby. Outbreaks him. And now just needs to make sure he doesn't get overtaken here into the left-hander. 
No. So Martin Gosby back to 15th position. Oh, and now Harley Hamlet makes a little bit of a mistake. And that will allow Florian Becker to at least try to make a move. But it is difficult around here in Hockenheim. A little bit of a gap building up between Daniel Brewer, who's the uh, the last of the options runners um, in the in, in the lead group anyway, and Michi Hoyer in ninth place, the first of the prime runners. There's uh, a now a six second gap between those two. Um, over the next ten laps or so, uh, that pendulum should swing a little bit the other way, because the options start to go off just that little bit. And uh, the prime stays very consistent and improves as the fuel load drops. So Hoyer won't want that gap to build up too much more than 14 seconds because um, a pit stop is going to be around about 20. And he just needs to be in good shape when these... He certainly Ooh. doesn't want any option runners to exit the pits on fresh tyres ahead of him. Here we go. Gosby around Mr. Cuppert. Yes. So he keeps it in front there. Nice stuff. But Harley Hamlet's so, so close to the back there of the football car. And Florian Becker also almost hit the back of the Invictus car. Almost a chain reaction happening there, but they keep it together for now. Schooler might have a chance now to overtake Hoyer on the, the straight. All right, thanks for the spot there. Schooler has got the option tires compared to Hoyer's uh, prime tires. So as you mentioned uh, earlier, David, Hoyer is doing a very, very good job here in keeping up kind of with the lead pack on the other tire. And of course, also probably on a much higher fuel load. Well, indeed, he's on the slower tyre and he would be fueled for probably 30 laps versus the guys on the options being fueled for 20. So he's yep. carrying an extra 30 litres of fuel and on the slower tyre. So the gambler, of course, he wants it all to swing his way uh, when the option runners get to the, l the last five laps of an option stint. Uh, they're still quick, but you've got to be a bit careful. Um, and he's going to hope that he can... Uh, pass them when they pit but he needs to stay within 20 seconds of the leaders for that to work yep so let's take a look at daniel brewer because i think he is pretty close to peter Perljak as well so will he be close enough no i don't think so we'll get a bit of a toe but not enough to make a move unless he Totally goes for an insane dive bomb, but to come from really far then. <laughs> don't see that happening and don't think Peter is going to leave the door open so wide. Is he now? He makes a mistake on the braking there, almost loses the rear. Whew. But he keeps it in front. So the drivers are all absolutely on their limit here. But what's going to happen over the next six or seven laps is that we're going to see a bit of evolution. We're going to see a bit of tyre deg. The fuel loads will drop, so the car gets lighter, but the tyres start to go away from them a bit. And so the car's handling characteristic alters ever so slightly. And it's usually exiting the sax curve where oh. you start to realise that your Sorry options to are going off. Sorry cut you there, but Florian Becker was trying it around the left hander in sector two. Almost made the move stick there, but had to back out of it. Yeah, that's a good spot for an attack there if you get a good exit from the hairpin. Yeah, indeed. But he couldn't make it stick, so he has to try some other place. So if there are any, there, there are any three stoppers this race, I think we will see them stopping in about one, two, maybe three laps. And the rest of the guys will be going to lap 18, lap 20, around that margin. Yes, it's going to seesaw a bit, isn't it? Where these, these front runners on the options will need to use pr the prime tyre. And along hand in hand with that, 
is a bigger fuel Ooh. load. Becker making another big move on Cappet yeah. up the inside at the uh, hairpin. He did. But Cappet's done the old switch back, the over and under, and kept the position. Beautiful driving uh, defense from Cappet there. Yeah, Becker trying to catch him out by doing a, uh, a dummy. But he couldn't really make it, uh, make it work. Cappet are very strong on the defense here. Doing a very good job as well. Yeah, classy driver from both these guys. Uh, fantastic battle. And that's for P15 in a World Championship event, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, indeed. And there still are a couple of cars behind them who would love to join into the battle. So Patel still within a second of Maguire, but can't really make any uh, attack on him. Well, maybe he's got some strategy plans uh, behind his uh, mind. Well, he's a very, very skilled and very clever driver, Patel, the World Championship leader, and he's smart enough to know there's no point nuking his front tyres sitting in Adam Maguire's dirty air for lap after lap. So yeah. he'll just have a bit of a period of conservation uh, that would be my bet, and then he will attack around the pit stops. Yes, exactly. I think that is uh, well set there, Dave. Now, Stefanko has got to be pretty happy. Four seconds adrift. He's uh, in clear air, able to look after his car. Martin's been doing a lot of setup work uh, with the ACR team. One or two of the other guys have been helping him a lot with setup, and he's uh, f found the setup where he feels he's getting very good tyre wear. So. We might see some action from uh, Martin uh, around about the pit stop window as well. Here we go, Becker is close again into turn one. Is it close enough this time? He is close, he is close, closing in as well. It's not enough. 318 on the clock. But just not enough to get past this football racing car. Still very close to the gearbox there. He can't seem to find his way around him. Right, so field is now getting a little bit more spread out. Of course, Michi Hoyer with that prime tire has got a little bit of a gap to Daniel Brewer and the rest of the guys in front of that. Oh, Becker. Oh, and in front, there's a car spun around. Is that one of the Maguires? Yes, it's Luke Maguire. He made the mistake in turn one. Now is without a front wing. Needs to turn the car around and needs to do the rest of the lap without a front wing. Or is he going to retire the car? He's standing still there on the middle of the track. Please decide something. Don't do that. <sighs> Almost backed out into the point to wing there, car there of Timo Valkyarvi. That was a very scary moment. It seems that he has heavy suspension da damage as well. I'm just on board with him seeing if his uh, steering wheel is pointing in the right direction. Um, I'm going to try to find a replay. Yes, I've got it here. Um, so let's see what, what happened. I think he just went to the curb too much. We already saw it in qualifying that he was so aggressive on those curbs in turn one. Let's watch the replay. So on board here with Maguire. Coming to turn one. Touches the exit curb, turns it in on the exit curb of turn one. Too much power, loses the rear end. Ooh, and almost collects Gosby there. But indeed loses his front wing and then all the cars after that luckily can get past him nicely. But this is certainly going to damage his race a lot. 
Well, it's going to be a superhuman effort. If he gets this car repaired, his, his suspension damage will still be there. He can yep. get a front wing back on, and it's going to be a very uncomfortable afternoon. Yeah, definitely. Um, Peter Broyak is dropping places. Or he's battling with Benio Brewer. They're side by side. Side by side through here. Surely that cannot be done. No. Brewer backs out of it. But he is on the attack. Oh, what does he do? He parks the car. What is he doing? I hey. don't know. He's heading back to the track now. This is very strange to see. Daniel Brewer just seems to like park the car for 10 seconds and then drive on again. Let's see if I can get a replay of that that uh, little battle they had. It seemed to be a little uh, quite fierce. But the ending there, very strange. But go, let's go on the replay. So let's go on the TV camera. Brewer tried to go around the outside of Brilliac. That didn't work. Then Brilliac made a little bit of a mistake. Brewer tries to go around the outside. N then the next corner. This is where we patched in. And then let's go on board with Brewer. He just turns in. Then makes the mistake. Oversteer. And, then and just almost came breaks. to stop on the grass. Yeah. It looked like maybe he the, the simulation crashed to desktop or something. That could be the only, only thing I can think of that yeah. to explain that. Indeed, something like that. Oh, Lopez, Lopez, what happened to Lopez? Ron Lopez, DNF. His car is parked in the pit lane. Let's see what happened. So, is it at turn one as well? I think so. I think it's turn one. Here we go, coming up to it. Touches the inside curb too much. Then on the outside, there is grass there. And he goes into the wall, loses his rear wing and his right rear wheel as well so that's definitely not going to be repaired by in a, in a pit stop well that's a real shame uh, a bit of a, uh, a race to forget with fran lopez he's um dnf'd in this one with a very broken car dnf'd with a broken engine at silverstone and uh, poor luke luke mcguire uh, now two laps down with a damaged car uh and still uh recovering luke of course um had a bit of an incident with uh, with some automatic game issued penalties in the um, the ace race uh, yesterday, which put him out of contention. So he's having a rough time at Hockenheim. Yeah, indeed. So it seems that Florian Becker has gone and passed uh, Risto Kappert uh, finally a couple of laps ago. He missed that unfortunately. But uh, he's now starting to chase down his teammate again a little bit. Of course, his teammate is on the quicker tire. But I think the pit window is going to open this, maybe next lap. Let's see who's going to be the first to pit. Yeah, the cars will now, these options runners, their cars will be very low fuel now. And if they want to get something done, it's time to attack. The Teld might be hoping he's got a lap or two more fuel on board than Adam Maguire. Yeah. So that he can really put the hammer down. Van Buren is in the pit lane, Ooh, by the way. Michele, Michele, Michele D'Alessandro in turn one as well. He made the mistake and he is out of the race. I guess if I show the replay, I already know what's happening. And Rudy Van Buren in the pit lane. Yes, he's taking on prime tyres. And quite a bit of fuel, judging by the, number, uh, the amount of time the stop's taken. Oh, yep. Michele D'Alessandro curb of turn one definitely his race over there damn a lot of dnf there and he's dropping yeah of course with the dnf <laughs> now you'll remember we talked earlier about uh, mishi hoyer and that 20 second gap mishi is 20 seconds behind the leader and all the options runners are going to start pitting very soon yep that's true so if mishi we saw that in melbourne I think it was Michi as well. Uh, guys with a different strategy got stuck behind Michi. I think it was Simonchich. And here we go. Maguire goes into the pit lane. Maguire pitting. Patel stays out. So Patel is going to try to put the hammer down now. And set some fastest laps to uh, to get an overcut on Maguire. Here we go. Maguire goes to the prime tire. So definitely Patel is going to try the overcut. And Stefanko also in the pit lane. Now the Invictus car of Brewer Maguire, as Stefanko, well. Brewer all in the pits. Yeah, pits is getting very busy now. And Patel going for that extra lap. This is going to be decisive for the first pit stop phase. Where is Adam Maguire rejoined? He has rejoined in front of any traffic. 
So that's good for him. Actually, he is not really. He's got Valeriano in front of him, same as Michi Hoyer. So let's see Patel. His first sector is reasonably good. A little bit slower than his personal best, but that's of course uh, not very strange with worn option tires. Surely he's coming into the pits this lap. And will he be rejoining in front of Maguire? There yes, Patel in the pits, he called that one correctly. Brexit nice in... Masculi into the pits. Briak into the pits, so they're all in pit lane. Let's see if Hoyer can jump them. Hoyer's in the final complex now. The second to last corner. Yeah, surely Hoyer gets out in front and of them. And now rounding the sud curve. Final corner. Patel just on the limiter now, approaching the limiter line. On the right we see and Maguire. And Michi Hoyer has passed him for P1. Where's Maguire going to rejoin? He is behind Mohamed Patel. Mohamed Patel has jumped him in the pit stop phase. And this is what he was aiming for. He saved his tires, as you mentioned, David. Right behind uh, Maguire. Didn't get too close with the dirty air. And now he has striked. It's just fascinating how that can happen. So Hoyer now, of course, he's um, in first place on track. But he, he, he's down a pit stop. However... He's on low fuel. These guys that have just put tyres on are on high fuel. Yep. And Mishi uh, has got an option stint up his sleeve. So Mishi can do a low fuel option stint. And uh, we'll, we'll see how that all shakes out. So good job. Um, uh, good strategy from Mishi. And a lovely overcut from uh, Mohamed Patel. Yes, exactly. Very nice stuff. And in him, oh, and Valeriano has not has, hasn't pitted yet. Valeriano is also a prime runner, yeah. so he's on the same strategy as Hoyer. Exactly. So further down the field, teammates Brewer and Harley Hamnet are right behind each other. Ooh, as I say that, Harley Hamnet makes a mistake over the anti-cuts. He goes. He wanted to go into the pit lane actually, so it didn't help him uh, much. Um, now he's coming into the pits. We'll be rejoining probably around Dave Bailing or something like that. I believe Martin Gosby also made his pit stop. Yes, he did. Rejoined in front of Florian Becker. Or did Becker also stop? Yeah, Becker also stopped. So Becker going for his second prime stint. Um, and we'll be going probably for an option stint after this one, at least. Unless he goes for a three-stop with two prime stints, but I don't, don't, don't really see that happening. That would be a weird strategy. Hoyer's on metronomic pace. He's doing 17-4s, 17-3, 17-4, 17-3. So he's certainly um, getting a good consistent stint out of these tyres. Yeah, definitely. Primes are very consistent this year. You can... Well, of course, if you don't over push them, but you can push them quite a quite a bit, and they can take you yeah, around around the same lap time for almost the entire stint. Of course, the fuel load will drop, and then therefore you maybe even get a little bit quicker. As you see, Michi Hoy just put in his personal best lap time. He will be uh, starting to push now to try and make any under uh, or overcut work on. Prime stoppers that have stopped already, like Florian Becker. Yeah, so what Michi, I guess, ideally wants to do is um, come out higher up than where he was in P10 uh, after his next stop. So Maguire is uh, dropping a tiny bit off the back of Patel, uh, if I'm correct. I'm just going to look at his lap times. Yes, I think so. Oh, we don't really oh, have any... Who's that? 
Is that Van Buren or is that Capet? He made a mistake. I think it's Van Buren. Yes, it is indeed. Made the mistake and loses two positions. Let's uh, watch the replay of that. Just saw the ending stage of that mistake from the Dutch driver. Here we go. So, he was coming through the first corner of sector 3, the right-hander here. Did he touch the curb on the outside too much? Yeah, he missed it. Goes on the gravel. Then you lose it. And he tried to save it. Luckily, no other car is involved. And he keeps it out of the tire barrier. So, no real damage except the tires. Will be probably a little bit flat-spotted and uh, overheated. And now Daniel Brewer is starting to make his attack on Risto Capet. Valeriano Pitting. Yes, indeed, Valeriano in the pits and followed by John eric Saxon. Michi Hoyer still staying out on his prime tires. And still going fast. Yep. Valeriano missed his, missed his pit box. He lost like one or two seconds. That is not going to help him. Ooh, Daniel Brewer makes a mistake. And Valeriano will be joined behind him. Valeriano is, however, on the option tires. So he will, I think, start to challenge Daniel Brewer a bit as well. So I wonder how many more laps Michi Hoyer can do on these primes. Yeah, I don't know. If he can get, um, if he can get to twenty-seven laps, he's he's really then two option stints from home. He can run two twenty-lap option stints and have the uh, the upper hand in pace. True. That is definitely true. Maybe he can do that. I don't know. Um, but he needs to to stretch this, stretch this stint by maybe another two three laps. His pace is dropping off ever so slightly. He's gone from 17-1, 17-1, 17-3, 17-5. Yep. So starting to lose a little bit of pace now. But you know what? I think uh, I'm just looking at the gaps. If if he pits now, he's going to come out in seventh place and uh, on fresh options, presuming he goes for options next time round, uh, and lower fuel. <clears throat> so he's put himself in a very good position. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I think this is going to work out for him quite nicely. But he still needs to uh, still needs to make it work. And he's pitting. Hoyer right. ent enters the pits after 26 laps of this 67 lap event. So I'll keep an eye on him and let you know what tyres he takes. He should be rejoining right around, what is it? Bristol Cuppert right in front of him. So Hoyer's taken the options. So this is his uh, time to shine. Low fuel and options. Cuppert is on, uh, on the pit straight. Hoyer has just crossed the limit of line. It's going to be... Uh, no, Hoyer's going to have it. Hoyer yep. will have P7. Cap it safely around turn one. And Hoyer approaching turn two. Yeah, with that lovely feeling there. of relatively low fuel and fresh options. Yeah, look, McGuire there right in front or right behind him. Um, of course, a lap down after the incident he had. And at the moment... In the front, Adam Maguire is struggling a bit to keep up with Mohamed Patel. Gap is 2.1 seconds. Let's see. What can he do? Can he close it in? I don't know. That's come down ever so slightly because it was about two and a half seconds uh, when I looked uh, three or four laps ago. 
Uh, yeah. Last lap was within half a tenth. Stefanka, who has pitted, went uh, for primes again. So they've, he and Hoyer between them, they've covered off both strategies. So Stefanko, um, he snuck under the radar there a bit because he's had um, he's had a pit stop. He's lying P3 yeah. and on fresh primes. Yeah. So he's uh, he's put himself in a very strong position as well. Yeah, he made the overcut work as well. I think he stopped even later than Patel, did he? No, oh, he stopped uh, he even stopped, earlier. Uh, he did yeah, 20 laps. Earlier. So he just uh, made it work there, I think. So has had a well, little bit of a quiet, quiet race. Of course, not much battling going on, but... Who needs battling if you are, or if you are safe and sound on a podium position? I think any driver would uh, would take that any day. Well, Over. indeed, this is uh, Formula Sim Racing World Championship, and anybody who's um, unsure of the standards, get yourself a copy of R Factor Two and come and have a go. Um, our servers are not passworded during the week. Uh, the tracks are free to download. The cars are free to download, so you can yep. grab a car. And drive your favourite um, your favourite driver's livery, and see how your lap times compare. Yes, exactly. If you're fast where you race, come and have a go at Formula Sim Racing. Yeah, you can just uh, head over to our website. The links is in the the links are in the the description. You can download the cars and the tracks there. I believe I'm not 100% sure about this, and maybe someone will correct me about this in a couple of seconds. I believe there is also a link in the Steam Workshop to the. At least to the last year's cars, I know that for sure, but I don't know for sure if this year's car is on there as well. Maybe someone can correct me on that. But I think there's a link on Steam Workshop as well, so then it's even much easier for you to do that. Okay, not at the moment, so uh, last year's car is on there, so you can try that out. You can uh, try to see if you can match the pace of our world champion, Jerome Creekle from last year. And uh, otherwise, just download the car from our forums on uh, formulasimracing.net. Or probably, I think they're probably get modded as well. If you log, if you True. go onto the server, yep. you can just it'll download. Indeed. Uh, Mishi Hoy's first lap in clear air was uh, one full second quicker than Mohammed Patel's uh, first lap in clear air. Yep. Yeah, Seventeen seven strong. pays uh, sixteen eight. Looking very strong there, Mr. Hoya. Of course, we've said it already, he is one of the uh, guys to look out for. He's been on a charge, age last year, very dominant. And doing well so far in the World Championship. And not against the least drivers. I mean, he's got better Brilliac driving. Eros Mashuli, Mohamed Patel, one of... One of the most experienced drivers here on the grid today. Um, and I mean, Adam McGuire is also someone that really needs a uh, needs some praise here. I mean, he's driving a very solid race in his, um, maybe not his first cha world championship race, but uh, he's doing a very well, very good job so far. Well, indeed. I mean, Adam's, uh, unless I'm mistaken, Adam's normally driving in ace. And so mm -hmm. he's stepped up yep. to world championship. And by the way, the gap to Patel is coming down. It's now 1.7. Yeah. Indeed. So the, the the balance of that car uh, on the on the prime seems to be coming to Adam, and he's driving it very very confidently. Enough to uh, hurt Patel's pace, and uh, but he's going to have a bit of the medicine that he dealt out to Patel in the first stint, uh, staring at uh, Mohammed Patel's gearbox for a few laps. Yeah. Oh, I hear something happening. Who has made a mistake? Uh, it's Rudy van, van Buren again. Buren. Van yeah. Buren off into the kitty litter. And without a rear wing, Rudy, you can get to the pit lane, but it's not going to be very nice. Here we go. Is he going to um, make it? Uh, yeah, fortunately, he's only a couple of corners from pit lane, but I'm not sure if rear wing is even repairable. Yeah, it is repairable, but it takes like half a minute. So uh. Uh, he can try to, but it's going to take a while for his pit crew to repair his rear wing. I'm fortunate to see him having such a difficult race. I was really hoping to uh, uh, to see him a little bit more up the uh, up the order. But well, he's a real he's a real talent. Yeah, surely. 
Risto Caput just leaving the pits on fresh uh, options. So jean eric Saxon and Martin Gosby now are really getting close to each other. And right behind that it is also Florian Becker not uh, getting too far away from his teammate. You can see that Gosby is closing in. A little bit of an oversteery moment there for Saxon. Really struggling for some grip, it uh, seems. I'll have a look when he changed top. Well, I think we saw him coming in round about lap uh, 20. I'll have, oh, no, it was more like 24. I think he came in a lap before Hoyer, a couple of laps before Hoyer. I'm just having a look at his strategy now. Yeah, he did 25 laps on primes and selected primes again seven laps ago. So he's on, uh, John Eric uh, Saxon is on pretty fresh rubber, really. I'm not sure what's happening yeah. there. Yeah, Gosby is probably on a little bit order, probably five laps, I think. Five, six laps order, rubber. Um. And John Eric's doing low 17s, which is a pretty good lap time. And Adam Maguire is not closing anymore. The last oh, laps, oh, he lost maybe a bit of time. Like maybe. Uh, last lap, Patel was uh, pretty quick, 16.9. So Patel starting to pick up the pace again a little bit. That's quick on primes. Yeah, definitely. Of course, as I said, the fuel loads will decrease, so it will also get a bit quicker, especially with the primes. They stay so consistent, and then with the lower fuel loads, you get a bit quicker. Of course, there is a limit to how much... Uh, tire wear and how little fuel makes you quicker but seems that at the moment Patel is getting quicker and let's see how Adam Maguire can respond to this because we might have a chance to overtake now on the straight yes indeed good spot there thank you Sergi Gosby the top speed of Saxon is actually very high but Gosby tries a outbreaking maneuver gets a Push there from Saxon a little bit wide on the curb, maybe into the left hander now. Right on his rear. Is he gonna try it around the outside? Breaks very late. Turns the car in. Now needs a good exit. Oh, it what, what, what actually a move, what a works. Move from Gosby. Yeah, great stuff there from the Random British driver. That man. And Florian Becker is gonna try it as well as soon as he can. Wants to stay with his teammate. That was a very good uh, defense from Saxon into and out of the hairpin. So for Gosby to hang with him uh, yep. and make the move into the Mercedes-Benz stand corner, uh, fabulous driving. Great stuff indeed. Now it's Florian Becker's turn though. Saxon doesn't have the best exit out of turn one, so... Florian will try to make a move on the straight, but we've seen the uh, top speed from er uh, John Emmerich Saxon is actually not too shabby. Top speed, a little be best top speed so far on the server was 326, so let's see what Florian can do. Florian is on the limiter on 318, that's not going to help him. Outbreaking him, takes the inside, now needs to steer the car, maximum lock. And seems to make it stick. However, maybe Saxon can do a uh, Gosby. Nah, he's too far back now. And there's a yellow flag in sector three. Yeah, Becker pushed Saxon wide there. That was uh, just a little bit more robust uh, in marking out his territory than uh, than probably mm. was. Valky RV. Valky RV is in the barriers and out of the race. So flag already. Let's watch the replay. What happened there? So, Timu coming to the penultimate corner. Did he hit the anti cuts? No. Oh, he just parked it. Or an alt tab or something. But just didn't steer in anymore. Braked. And uh, DNF'd. Weird. Don't know exactly what happened there.
So Adam Maguire, who came second in the rain sodden ace event yesterday, has put himself in a good position to certainly claim second uh, in this event. I'm sure he would like to do better. Uh, Patel's only got to make one mistake in 67 laps and Maguire will pounce. But um, a second place in uh, one of his first World Championship events would be a superb result for Adam. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and we get confirmation that Timo's R Factor 2 uh, went to desktop, crashed. So, unfortunate for uh, the Finn, I believe. Finnish driver. But he will just have to take an ice cream and uh, deal with it, I guess. Now, Peter Briak, by the way, is quietly inserting himself into the picture. He did 21 laps on his option stint. And he's 15 laps now into his prime stint and only 11 seconds off the lead. So as, uh, as Peter gets the feel for this car, because he's not been driving all season, we might find a, a strong attack from him. He's, he's very close to Masculi already. Masculi and Stefanko, in fact, are, you know, are a very short distance ahead of him. And Peter is lapping very consistently. In fact, he's got into the 16s a couple of times on his prime stint, so... Peter uh, not messing about. Stefanko DNF. Oh, Stefanko. Martin Stefanko. He was on the podium. What happened to him? Stefanko is out. I think it's just this connection. I'm pretty sure it is. Here we go on the replay. Is it a disconnection? Or is it a mistake? Yeah, it's a disconnection. Ah, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Oh, this what a shame for uh, the wow. chip driver. Sorry, sorry to see that happen to you, Martin. I know he was driving very, very well and he put himself in a strong position. That's uh, brutal when that happens. Uh, Becker in the pit lane, by the way. Yeah, he is already in the pit lane. Uh, didn't he go for a double, double option? Uh, he's only done 17 laps on these yeah. primes, so yeah, I exactly. don't quite know what he's doing. Maybe he wants to do something clever to get around some people he... Uh, he can't get past on track, but uh, well, I mean, it's very what short is he going to do then? Is he going to do a three stop with double option stint now? Because surely he's not going to be doing 30 laps on well, a this option stint. He's got to stop again for options, so he's he's going to have to do. Oh, he's done another prime stint. A so prime a prime stint now, and then options at the end. Bam. There's only 29 laps left in the race, though. Yeah, exactly. So, not quite sure what that's about. Uh, weird strategy there for the Dutchman. Can't really do, uh, seem to get my head around it. Maybe some, some strategy. I wonder if he scored a penalty and decided to take tyres when he served it. Could be. Could be that he indeed had a stop go or something because of a cut or anything. I don't know. Seems to be uh, getting a little bit darker on, uh, on the track, by the way. Some clouds it appearing. Is, it? I'll, I'll have a look at the weather, the satellite picture of the weather. Yeah, sure. Um, still 0% chance of rain. Ooh, here we go. Who's that? That is Hardy Hamnet going into the pit lane for his final stop, I think. Yes, that is going to be his final stop. Probably going to the primes for a last time to the finish line is he now let's go to the options or it's the game not loading the tires properly but it seems that he is indeed driving the option tires so well he'll need to pit again he did 16 laps on that last option stint so he's stopping again yeah interesting to see there some guys who would appear to be on the two-stop strategy seem to be switching yes, to the three-stop. Yes, Harley only did 22 laps on his prime stint, so it just would appear some of the drivers just are not as comfortable on, on one tyre or the other. Yeah. So he's decided to uh, spend most of his afternoon on options and try to maximise his pace. Exactly. So 
So Patel is uh, coming up on, uh, in fact, coming up on Harley ha um, Hamnet to uh, lap him. So um, Harley's an experienced driver. I'm sure he'll make it uh, trouble-free for Mohammed Patel to get the pass. It's a skill in and of itself, really, being lapped, knowing where to lift and where to make it easy. Yeah, for sure. Adam McGuire is losing even more time at the moment to Patel. Yeah, He's back up to 3.6 seconds. Yeah, last lap lost almost a second. Last lap from Patel, 16.7. Last lap from Maguire, 17.5. Oh, it must have been a mistake in there. Yeah, surely. And Becker is closing the gap with a car in front of him. I think they both need to stop again, so it's for real position. Yeah, a good spot there. So Florian Becker. Weird strategy at the moment. Outside of the points at the moment. Not the best day for him, I think. Would have liked to uh, be a little bit further up. up. But, uh, let's see what he can do. Did any of you guys ever drive the, the old circuit, the old Hockenheim ring? The long track? No, I actually didn't. Me neither. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to age me a bit if I tell you, but I used to drive <laughs> that on Formula 1 97. Yeah. Hard to believe that's 20 years old, that game now. Yep, it's older than me. Well, Beck is getting a good run on uh, Milinek. Yeah, not enough though. His top speed seems to be yeah, limited to his speed limiter. It's always a little bit difficult then. Luke, Luke Maguire moving aside to let them through. Yes, indeed. Of course, taking my uh, taking uh, count that Orion is on the. Um, the sort of uh, on the harder tire or the slower tire. We go good exit out of turn one there from Becker. Can he make it work in the straight though? To get a good exit out of this corner, and then needs to also have the slipstream and the top speed to get past. Here we go. Closing in, closing in. Where is he going to go? Around the outside. Is it going to be working? Maybe try to switch back. No, keeps it around the outside. Gives it a bit of power and gets in front. Great move there again from Florian Becker. Putting himself up to 12th position. That, that was very neatly done. I might just do a shout out to our, our fellow commentator, Dave Paling, who often is in either broadcasting the, uh, the race or helping in, in, in commentating. Dave uh, stepped up to World Championship. Dave is normally a driver on the pro grid, so he stepped up two levels to World Championship for his team Go Speed. And Dave, 41 laps in, still remains unlapped in this race. Uh, having done 20 laps on the options and he's 21 laps into a prime stint so clearly on a two-stopper but uh, well done Dave he's in the deep end with the Sharks and he's, uh, he's, he's, he's holding his own yeah you know right I'm not going to say anything about Dave because we we have some sort of cursing going on between each oh, other oh that's right yes so I mean <laughs> okay. I mentioned him in the pro race oh. and you saw what happened to him there Okay. My mouth is so shut. <laughs> don't mention it. <laughs> yeah. The good old commentator's curse seems to be a bit of uh, a bit overpowered between uh, between us two, so now I wonder if Christoph Schauer can uh, catch John Eric Saxon. Schauer is lapping in uh, high one seventeens. Oh Hamlet on the herpin. Saxon is very, very similar pace. Alright. So, Maguire still struggling to keep up 
with Patel at this point in the race. Again, his lap time is around uh, three, four tenths slower. Patel just in the high to yeah, high high sixteens, low seventeens. At the moment, Maguire didn't really get into the low sixteens. A couple of sixteen point nines, but not uh, not as much as Patel. So. Seems to be struggling. Might be that he has got a little bit more fuel than Patel. Could be. Well, Maguire is um, 23 laps into this prime stint. He did 20 laps on the options in his first stint. And uh, he's 23 laps into this prime stint. The race has 23 laps remaining. So Luke could actually switch to options in a yep. couple more laps if he wanted to. Yes. And that might be the dice he's got to throw. But to, uh, Patel could do the same. Yes, he could. He could. In, in fact, um, Patel um, stopped a couple of laps after Maguire. Yeah. So Patel's got the luxury of just staying out. He's got a three-second gap. He can just stay out and cover Maguire. He can just do whatever Maguire does. True, yeah. But, however, now there will be an undercut possibility, I think, because the prime tire, even though he has much less fuel... Is, I don't think it's going to be quicker than a fresh option tire around this track. So Mahomet Patel needs to watch out because Adam Maguire might make some undercut work if he stops earlier. Yes, it would need to be the outlap of all outlaps really because yeah. he'll have a Surely. belly full of fuel to get him to the finish. He'll have fresh tire. A masculine pitting from P3. All right. So he's the first of the top pack to do his final pit stop. He is going to the option tires indeed. So this would, I think, uh, yeah, make sure. Or what is it? Uh, definitely confirm that these guys are going for a final option stint. I don't think anyone is going to go to a prime stint now, especially now. Else has gave a, has gone for this strategy because he will just be quicker. Valeriano pitting as well um, from an option stint and looks like he's got he's gone options again. Yeah. Of course, last season it was always easy to run a long option stint at the end because the car there was no refueling, so you started off with a very heavy car, hundred yeah. liters of fuel or more, hundred and forty liters. Yeah, and basically. your final stint the car was light, the track was rubbered in. But now, of course, we've got the track gets rubbered in, but everybody's car is just as heavy at the end because of refueling. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, because of that refueling, the total amount of fuel these cars use... Ah, is Patel is pitting. Sorry to, um, sorry to speak over you there. Mohamed Patel has pitted, leaving yep. Maguire on track. Oh. What it, what tyres... And he's had, a, oh, he's had a bit of an issue pitting yeah. there. He's had to put the, the car sideways. Yeah, uh, there was an issue with the ghost speed uh, car of Luke Maguire. Um Getting a bit in the way there. Maybe some brotherly uh, competition uh, going on there. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but so uh, Patel has gone for options. Yep. So he's got a 20, um, 21 lap stint Ooh. to do on the options. E he's easy to do for him. Yeah, but he's going to get stuck behind Hoyer though. If he, not, oh, yes. if he doesn't get past right and now. This is, and this is for position. And so Hoyer is not going to give this up. Hoyer would be engineered at the moment uh, by one of his, one of his uh, teammates. Wow. And the longer he holds Patel up, the more chance he's got to do well in the closing stages of the race. Although clearly they're not, he's not racing Patel because Hoyer's got yet to pit, uh, yet to do a stop, his final stop. But this is definitely helping Adam Maguire. Well, it's a blessing, isn't it, for Maguire? Yep, uh, it is indeed. Uh, where is Michigoy? Oh wait, I'm watching the wrong, uh, <laughs> watching the wrong Mustakar. I was also like, hmm? where has he gone? But. Um, Maguire yeah, Patel, Patel's uh, struggling and the undercut is definitely not going to work now. So what is it going to be? Adam Maguire and also Peter Brilla coming into the pits. You can see it there. There's the car of his brother, Luke Maguire. And Where Boyer is Patel? as well. There is Patel. This is going to be close on exit. This is going to be very close on exit. Patel now through turn one. Adam Maguire is still behind him. So... He has gained a little bit of time, about one second, I think. But 
Patel made sure that he couldn't get in front. Now, there's going to be an interesting battle here. Peter Briak uh, was um, P3 for a minute, but Musculi's passed him on pit exit. So if uh, Briak wants to get on the podium, he's got to catch and pass uh, Eros Musculi. Yeah. Uh, I don't think uh, Eros, even though he's, uh, he's part of the Musto Twister team, I don't think he's going to give it up too easily. No, it's a podium, podium. podium world championship is not something you give away. No, ex exactly. So we just saw Musculi stop. Musculi's done two laps on these options, so uh, which should be comfortable for him. He did 21 laps uh, on options on his opening stint, so he certainly is going to be able to do 22, 23 laps in this final stint. But two laps is two laps, and Peter Briak uh, is a very, very good driver. He's going to—he's got a second and a bit to win back and he will be going all out to take that podium spot definitely but further down the field Martin Gosby and Giordano Valeriano are also really close to each other I think both of them as well on uh, their final sets of tires yes they are indeed so it's an interesting battle as well of course Florian Becker behind that as well but he needs to stop again. Because he hasn't so far um, done the tyre regulations. He has only driven... Well, yes, yeah. He did that strange short stint yeah. on, the, on the prime. And he's 11 laps into this prime stint. So, he'll, I guess he'll... Yeah, well, he's got to stop for options. And yeah, that's going to put him back um, around about where Harley, Harley Hamlet is. I tell you what, I take my hat off to Luke Maguire. He's been driving a car with suspension damage from since lap whenever it was. Yeah, Very time, early. Yeah. And now Adam Maguire is starting to put some pressure on Patel. Fast la fastest lap of the race, 16.345. So he's starting to pressure him a little bit more maybe. Let's see if Mohammed can uh, react to that lap time. Mohammed, it's got a lapped car to uh, clear. Uh, it's actually Luke Maguire. Luke will move over. Risto Kappert comes into the pit lane for his final pit stop. And I'm still looking at Martin Gosby. Will he be able to Make a move on Valeriano? No, I don't think so. Still too far back. Uh, the briac Musculi battle is starting to warm up a little bit. There's uh, a half-second gap now, so Peter's been creeping in. He was 1.2 seconds when we looked at him a lap ago. So Peter has absolutely turned up the wick yep. and is attacking Eros Musculi for that final step on the podium. Yeah, definitely. He is starting to... Pressure him. Oh, I hear some crash. I can hear that too. Where has that happened? I don't see anyone dropping like a stone. But, uh, I don't know, maybe somebody uh, somewhere hitting a front end plate because uh, I don't really see what happened. Saxon and Schauer hitting. Okay, that is nice to see. I'm keeping my eye on Peter Brilliak. And uh, Mlynek, Massage Mlynek also entering the pits from his option stint. Yeah, this is going to be game on now. 17 laps to go, and Peter Briak wants what uh, Eros Masculi has. Ooh, who's that there slowly? That was it's a funky place to get out of the way. No, it's Luke McGuire, I think he has damage. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't have a front wing. And that was the thing we heard. Luke Maguire again making a mistake, again having damage. Yeah, it's a, had a, a real struggle oh, with a damage car. See, uh, we see there two cars, ACR cars, uh, an ACR and a uh, Invictus battling with each other. Who is that? Michi Hoya and Daniel Brewer, I think. It is, yes. Yeah. 
Brewer all over Hoyer. Hoyer knows how to take up a bit of space when he needs to, and Brewer certainly uh, not shy in uh, close close combat. No, definitely. McGuire or Hoyer there, a bit sloppy on the exit of turn one. Then we were closing the gap on the braking. Now on the power he goes. Is it going to be enough? Does he have the top speed? Slipstream will help him, of course. He's closing in, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Top speed, 320. Tries to go for the braking. Locks up his inside wheel. That's not going to help his tire wear. Still need to go 15 laps. Meanwhile, just up the road, Briak is, is getting, on, getting on the gearbox of Masculi. So 51 laps into this 60, 67 lap championship event. It is on for young and old. A big race for P3 and a big race for P5. Oh, Maguire creeping ever so slowly onto Patel. 1.6 seconds now. Patel about to pass um, Luke Maguire. Just, a one, uh, just under 1.6 now between Maguire and Patel. It's just inch by inch. He's got uh, 15 laps left to do something. The one thing that doesn't tend to happen is Mohamed Patel making a mistake. That's the thing. It, and it just puts the, the pursuing driver under so much pressure. You've just got to drive so well to catch him. Yeah. And I don't see Patel making a mistake very easily. I mean, uh, what's happening with Valeriano and Gosby? They have They're side added. by side into yeah. the uh, into the Mercedes Benz Stadium. And he's made the big move work. On. Yeah, Gosby has made the move work. Let's see on the replay. Let's yeah, that'll be second. exciting replay. I mean, Luke McGuire, by the way, has finally DNF'd. So let's go on the replay. Here we go. So Gosby was close on the back straight. Did he go for the outside? Did he go for the inside? The outside for the hairpin. A uh, little bit of wheel banging there on the exit. Or side by side. Now coming through there. And this is where we picked it up. And indeed Gosby breaking him out. And keeps in front and takes that I believe ninth position. Seventh position actually. Seventh position. So... Now we still have basically two battles going on. Yeah, One Brewer battle for the still podium and Brewer for fifth position. Yeah, and Brewer's pushing hard, but he's not really in attacking uh, range yet of Hoyer. It's only going to take the smallest of missteps uh, for Brewer to be able to launch an attack on Hoyer. But at the moment, Hoyer is being very consistent. Briak has dropped back ever so slightly off Masculi. Eros Masculi just showing the pace that he's got. Yeah, both Brewer and Hoyer pushing it to the limit to try to uh, gain the upper hand. Ooh! Huh. Daniel Brewer almost losing the car there in turn one. Manages to keep it pointed in the right direction. No, Gloria pitting. Yeah, he's doing his final pit stop. I hope he, go he goes to the option tires now. <laughs> yes! Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on him and tell you. Yes, he's got yeah. options, finally. Yes. So, Brewer, oof, so close to the gearbox of Michi Hoya there and the hairpin. Will he be able to make the pass work, though? He's looking, he's looking, but he can't find a place.
And in the meantime, Patel is uh, keeping the gap around 1.5 seconds. But Maguire is definitely not giving up so far. He still's got 11 laps to go. Yeah, Maguire is pushing like crazy. He's pulling this, this gap in. It's like one-tenth at a time. It's now down to 1.4. It was 1.7 three laps ago. So it's happening very, very slowly. Uh, Mac, uh, incredible pressure driving at this pace in this kind of a battle. Yep. So Brewer again closing in. But it's not enough. It's not enough for him to get past. Hoyer seems to be getting very good drive out of the slower corners, which is making it tricky to get close to him. Yep. Brewer's making a lot of little micro corrections there. He's really got the car on the limit. Brewer just put in the fastest lap of the race, 16.285. Nice lap there from Brewer, and he's really close to the back of Mashuri has a little bit of oversteer though on the exit of turn two. Oh. Uh, will he be able to make a move? He's closing in. He's closing in. What is his top speed? Will he do anything on the braking? 360 now. He just waits for the perfect moment for now. And of course we're getting to a stage where uh, these options have now had a bit of wear and the various setups that the drivers are using aren't all the same so uh, one of these drivers might start to get the bet the upper hand he might just have slightly more advantageous balance over the other one i'm just looking at Masculi's uh, 11 laps into this tire stint yeah and uh Briac is nine laps in so we talked laps, about that yeah. earlier he's got a couple of he's got a couple of laps in hand and by the way, Florian Becker's just done fastest lap of race, as you would expect on a low fuel load and fresh options. Yeah, exactly. So, Briljak, this time, I think he's not close enough. He needs to find a spot to get past. Because at the moment... It's not really working. Michi Hoyer and Brewer. Brewer got past. Wow. Wait, Brewer that's what got we passed. Let's uh, take a look on the replay. Unless Michi Hoyer tries something here on the back straight. I'm just waiting for that. Because Hoyer will be trying something around the outside. Our brakes him. Maybe the switch back. On the power they go. It's not enough to put it alongside so far. Maybe on the braking here. No. So he has to either concede or hope Brewer makes a mistake. But let's go. Uh, let's go on to the replay there. So here we go on board with Daniel Brewer. Ah, uh, Michoy made the mistake into turn one, touched the curb a little bit too much, and that allowed Brewer to get alongside into turn two. And this is where we picked it up, basically. Hoyer then has to concede the position to to uh what is it uh, daniel brewer daniel brewer well that was good racing there from brewer i must say because he had to really put the pressure on he had to really hound uh hoyer yeah forcing him into a mistake finally and christoph score is now trying to Battle John Eric Saxon for a well, another championship point. Well, that's not going to help Christoph. Going on the curb in turn one, losing even more time. Now, how is Petar doing? Yeah. 
Brewer consolidating that pass really. Um, he's pulled uh, about a second now. Yeah, so showing eight, that. The yeah, eight laps to go, so not over. No, definitely not. Now is also the time where we can see who has managed his tires the best. Has Patel been saving maybe, been keeping the gap at around 1.5 seconds so that Maguire couldn't get any slipstream but also not pushing the tires too much and now in the last couple of laps he will start to maybe pull out the gap a little bit bigger. I don't know, maybe Maguire has done the opposite like saving in outside of the dirty air and now trying to start to push a little bit harder. I don't know, let's see. Well indeed and hopefully they've all fueled their cars um, enough and this is one of the things I think you know winning these races it's like stretching a bit of elastic there was a famous uh, metaphor that Alan Jones the 1980 Formula One world champion used to use Formula One is all about stretching the elastic and drivers get very annoyed if they finish the race with, with more than say one litre of fuel because uh, fuel is, is weight so they're always on the limit of, uh, of fuel levels and and there have been many occasions where we get to this stage of the race and people notice they're on a negative fuel delta and they've got to start saving some fuel yep and Maguire got closer now he's 1.2 behind oh yes it's only 1.1 and uh, Briak is getting very close to Miss yeah, now exit a turn 2 now he is really on for a move on the podium. Here we go. He goes for the outside, coming to the hairpin. Who has got the better braking? It is actually Mashuli. They make a little Ooh. bit of contact. Ooh, guys, watch out. And Peter has to concede to Mashuli once again. He has to try somewhere else or maybe try again next lap. But yeah, that see. was very marginal from Masculi there. He pretty much outbraked himself and had to use the whole of the track on the exit. Um, and that caused a bit of wheel banging. And uh, yeah, but to get the car pulled up from that less than optimum line, because not only you've got a worse angle from there, you've got less rubber on the road as well, because that's not the usual line. Yep. But and it says Maguire. to me that in this remaining six laps that it's not over. Briak is going to have another go at that for sure. Maguire within a second now so it's all on yeah definitely. battle for p1 battle for p3 so what will adam adam be able to do so briak's pulled up really hard on the on the gear. same uh, photocopy last lap briak was right on muscular's gearbox into the braking zone for turn two mm, he's got to take the slipstream almost as good a exit he doesn't take the slipstream that's that's interesting maybe he's trying to go for the move here you know what i think he's figured out that Musculi is not as strong under brakes into that corner i don't know why yeah. because Musculi had great braking into the hairpin so it wouldn't be cooling which of course is something these drivers push to the limit as well with setup. Absolute minimum brake ducting to keep the brakes at a good operating temperature. Because brake ducts create drag and create lift. Oh, and Florian Becker is trying it on the hairpin. Okay, good spot there, right behind Eristo Capet. Very close in braking there. Ooh, Florian, very aggressive there on the entry to the stadium section. Let's take a look, however, at uh, Petter again because he is close at the exit of the. Hairpin, yes, but it's not close enough. If Petter wants to make the move stick, he needs to make it work as soon as possible. Because he's only got five, well, four, four and a half laps remaining.
Ooh, Risto Capata breaks himself. And this allows Florian Becker to go through. Your ba battle's all over the track. Yeah, it's difficult to keep up with everything. We're doing our best. But it is about to kick off. I mean, Petar is still very close. Adam Maguire is also not too far behind. Anything can still happen. Well, Maguire is having to make a mass massive corrections for throttle oversteer. I think his, uh, his option tyres are turning to gum. Ooh. It almost looked to me that for a couple of laps there, Peter Briak might have just been cooling his tyres slightly. Might be my imagination, probably is my imagination, but uh, he just didn't seem to be attacking quite as hard. Yeah, well, Petar, he locked up his front tyre, so he's pushing definitely. Yeah, he's back on it now. The body language of the car is a bit different now. I think he's, he's going for another attack now. Hoping that uh, Masculi's tyres perhaps have uh, just gone off a little bit. It's Good okay. exit of turn one from both of them mm -hmm. really. Probably slightly better from Peter. And I think he's going to come in very close under brakes into turn two. He's very close to that car. Good needs a good exit. And to hook up into the slipstream. He's too far back. Well, we've got the um, little bit of concertina. Let's see. He's definitely going for the slipstream now. He's going to be very close at the apex here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not enough at the moment. It is not enough for the ex-world champion. Maybe he's just waiting for the last lap and then do it in the last corner. That would be exciting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That. But yeah. certainly Masculi's tyres are just that little bit uh, little bit heavier in wear. He, he would have had 22 laps by now um, on those options versus Peter with 20. Though it doesn't sound like much, but it's when they start to go, it's when it becomes a real problem. So Peter might still have a bit in his hand. Although, of course, uh, he's been in dirty air for a while too, which uh, doesn't help him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam McGuire is also still... Keeping up and maybe closing in the gap a bit to Mohamed Patel. But I don't know. I don't think Patel is going to give this away. Well, he's not going to give it away, but I don't think he's going to. Well, uh, Briak is mistake. attacking now down into the hairpin, just that little bit closer than last time round. Hope, hoping to pressure Masculi into a mistake. Which of them will get really good drive out of the, out of the hairpin? Well, he's got one try left, basically, after this one. Ooh, and again locking up there. <sighs> well, recovered that well. Yeah, but the gap has increased a bit because of that. Adam Maguire also close. It's the last lap is running. Maguire on the braking, getting closer to Patel here in turn two. Is it going to be enough? He's going to get a bit of slipstream, but not a lot. So either, uh, either his brakes uh, suddenly uh, are able to brake 100 meters later than uh, Peter or than Patel. We don't see that happening. Anyway, no. So as well now, Petter. On the power he goes. He's got some slipstream. It's not too far back, but mm, maybe in the corner after the hairpin we'll be able to do something. If he makes it work here, I don't know. I don't know. Oh no, on the curb too much. That will lose him some exit speed. Nah, he's not close enough. So I am going to take a look at Adam Maguire and Mohamed Patel. Because Mohamed Patel, after a very well strategy, very well played out strategy, the overcut on Adam Maguire wins here in Germany at the Hockenheimring.
And Adam Maguire with a very, very hard fought second place from pole position. Unfortunately, couldn't keep it in that first position. But very, very well done to him. Eros Mashuli is going to come home in third place, taking the final podium position. And Petar Briljak just misses out on that podium in fourth place. Then Daniel Brewer also uh, a good race for him and Invictus in fifth. Michi Hoyer not too bad in sixth, but I think he would have liked a little bit more with his alternate strategy starting on the prime tires than Martin Gosby. Race winner last round and uh, now finishes in seventh position. And then Dordano Valeriano in eighth. Finally a point for Jean-Eric Saxon and born to win. Two points actually. And then Christoph Schoer getting the final point here in the World Championship for Go Speed Engineering. What a race. Well, it, it, absolutely it was. And there were some incredibly hard-fought battles there in the, in, in, the, in the absolute closing laps of that event. Uh, we had uh, Brewer took uh, Hoyer for position. Briak and Mesculi could have gone either way. Um, I think Patel, uh, you know, to be frank, had, had Maguire covered. It was going to take a mistake from Patel, which was very unlikely. Um, I think they're the first points for Born to Win. Uh, yeah, John Eric Saxon indeed. in the top 10, P9. So there's yep. probably other highlights there from other teams I've missed, but uh, uh, congratulations to John Eric on, on ninth place. So, yeah, uh, some incredible driving there and some great battles, particularly in that final stint. And as you mentioned uh, in your closing comments, it was that, it was that overcut by Patel. Stayed out those extra two laps, put the hammer down, and uh, and got Brewer. Exactly, and that is what. Oh, so I got Maguire. Yeah, got me. Maguire. That's essentially what won him the race. But yeah, Patel still dominant here in the World Championship Series. Uh, I don't know, David. Could you maybe ask if somebody would be interested in a post-race interview? Y yes, I'll, I'll type it into the uh, text. Mm -hmm. Then they just need to either join the TeamSpeak or the Discord channel. Then we maybe can get an interview with either Patel or maybe Maguire. That would be, uh, would be very nice. But yeah, I think uh, uh, one of the, uh, the highlights so far of the season. A very close race. Very close finish as well. And Patel did, do, did not have it easy. Even with his main championship rival, Jonas Simoncic, not being... Um, not being at the scene today. Yes, and also I'm just remembering um, Patel got that very clever overcut, um, which gave him the lead, but he nearly lost it all, didn't he? Because he got caught behind uh, Hoyer on um, what became Maguire's outlap. So, um, or rather Maguire's inlap. So his outlap, McQuire's inlap, he was stuck behind Hoyer and it could have gone either way. But Hoyer pitted and uh, he did end up uh, retaining the lead. Yep, indeed. So do you know if there's anybody interested in an interview? Um, I've, I've typed the message in. But no response yet. I haven't had a response yet. Um, I'm just going to do it again. Um, there's still a few guys um, live on the server. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of action. Uh, most of, of course, around the around the pit stops. But those uh, battles in the dying stages, because the thing is, it, at this level, there just aren't not many mistakes get made. You've got to have the smallest of mistakes, and I guess um, that's where Brewer was able to pounce on Mishi Hoyer. That exit to turn one where he ran slightly wide. But um, in the absence of a mistake or in the absence of being on a very different fuel load and very different tyre, it, it, it is quite quite tricky to uh, to pull off a pass. But, uh, yep, uh, another classic Hockenheim race. So thank you very, very much to our audience for, uh, for yeah. staying with us for that. Surely, indeed. And... The next round is is going to be uh, also a very uh, interesting one. 
haven't been there in, I think, a long time. Even we at FSR haven't been there for a long time. Well, we have been there in the Winter Series. But the next round is going to be Manicourt. Manicourt, the, of course, the French circuit. Uh, Felix, we've been joined in the booth by Michi Hoyer. Okay, Michi Hoyer, uh, welcome. welcome. Race, so. So Hello, everyone. Let me just pull this up. Welcome, Michi. So, how, how, how was your race? Tell us, please. Uh, quite mixed. Obviously, I failed to put in a good lap in qualification, which sent me to place 14 on the grid. Um, minor suspension damage after lap one. So from there on, I was missing a couple of tenths per lap. Um, so in the end, I think P5 was the maximum. P6 is quite okay, uh, according to the circumstances. Yeah, yeah it looked, um, I mean, from our position, uh, we didn't know you had suspension damage, but it looked like a you ran a pretty good strategy from P14, starting on the primes and managing to managing to stay within a pit stop of the leaders and insert yourself into the well into the top 10 after the first pit stop cycle. It looked like a pretty good recovery. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's actually quite right. I mean, right in the beginning, then I was losing like a second per lap to Brewer ahead um, back in, I think, 10th or 9th positions that was. Um, I was a bit worried asking my engineer how about my pace. Uh, I only knew I was the, the top runner on the primes at that time. Um, yeah, and in the end, the uh, options had quite a bit of a drop off, and with uh, 10 additional laps compared to the option runners, I could, good, uh, I could go to a good overcut. Yeah, very, very well driven. I mean, maybe not as much uh, as you would have hoped, but sixth place. It's, it's not too bad, right? Yeah, it's a good recovery. I think uh, yeah, we, we had some damage limitation today going on. I mean, coming from 14th is always a difficult thing. Yeah. Shit, really. Who was your engineer today, Michi? Uh, I had Cody Planton in the back. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So Thanks to him. So oh, well, well, well done. Well done to climb from P14 to P6. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, and how are you How are you looking ahead to uh, to two weeks' time? Manjuku, of course. Different track than, I mean, hasn't been on the calendar for quite a quite a long time, apart from Winter Series, of course. How are you looking to prepare for that? Well, I got two weeks off from, from work right now, so that uh, should boost us a little bit in terms of setup work. But at the end of the day, I think uh, you, it, it doesn't matter how much time you spend on a setup. Literally, you see every every time the single... Um, yeah. Every the same persons are at the front spots and um, it mostly comes down to to the basic set you found in the beginning of the season and to switch around setups mid-season is quite a bit I don't know not actually sure if it's really possible um, so I'm gonna yeah, have some days off spend some free time and yeah get back to work yeah sure thank you very much for for joining us here and I think we have Another driver here in the booth with us, which is Martin Gosby. Welcome, Martin. Hello. So, tell us, how did your race go? I mean, we saw you in the start having a very difficult moment going to the back of the uh, the pack after, I think, five, six laps. Uh, how did you manage to recover from that? I mean... You are finishing here in seventh place after being basically at the back of the grid after a couple of laps. Yeah, well, uh, my turn one, first of all, was awful. I went onto the grass and lost a few places. And after that, I was already trying to fight through the field. And then I came across Valeriano. And um, I was trying to make a pass in him. It was a bit risky, but we made contact and we both half spun, but I got the full spin. And then, yeah, mm, I was at yeah. the back of the grid. Yeah, that's uh, some unfortunate luck. But yeah, great recovery to uh, to P7. Um, your strategy, what was it? Um, uh, had option, prime option. So yeah. uh, 21, 25 and 21. Or so. Yeah, yeah, 20, uh, I believe. Yeah, 21, 20, 25, 21. So same so strategy basically as the leaders. Yeah, I mean, if I didn't have the contact with Valley Rano, I think I... Still would have been in the chance for the top five. And and Martin, uh, congratulations on the win in Silverstone two weeks ago. That was uh, a fantastic drive. 
Um, it's just brought me back to reality, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing, isn't it? The the standard's so high that you you know can win one week and then be sort of battling your way from eleventh or third or thirteenth or fourteenth the following week. What how, what do you think of this car? Because it's a it's a, a couple of years since you've driven in Formula Sim racing. What are your thoughts on on the current car? I think the car is, is a tough one. I mean, in testing for this race especially, I was really quite far off in the initial testing. I was just eating the tyres and, yeah, my pace was bad. So it's just getting the right sweet spot. Yeah, indeed, because you've, you've, you've sort of got to push it, haven't you? you can't, you've got to really push it to get the lap time, but overdo it and um, and, and the tyres go off. So it's a, it's a real skill. Well, well, well done on a strong recovery. And, uh, and again, congratulations. Was that your maiden World Championship win um, uh, last round in Silverstone? <laughs> No, I had uh, two wins in 2014, um, but yeah, this is my first of this year. Let's see. Okay, well, that's uh, something to something to be pretty happy about. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. And of course, second in the championship, I think, after this round still, because Simon Cic isn't here. And uh, the other contenders are also not here, so... Yeah, Daniel Kiss missed it as well, yeah. so it's just Patel storming ahead, as usual. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. But anyway, great job, congratulations on the race, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Martin. So, uh, I think we have a couple of more drivers. Could you, uh, David, maybe ask if Patel uh, wants to join us? Uh, indeed. So, welcome, uh, welcome Mr. Mohammed Patel. Congratulations, first of all, w another win in the pocket. I mean, uh, when is it gonna stop, man? Um, thanks for all, first, firstly. I'm not sure when it will stop. Uh, hopefully, Eros, Michaela, and Danny will get more luck in the future and they can take some wins off me and we can share the glory together. <laughs> yeah, that would be, would be great. Uh, but yeah, tell us, how, how did your race go? I mean, you went that a that, uh, little bit longer on the uh, on the first stint, on the first option stint, one or two laps mm -hmm. than uh, Maguire, and then just got ahead after the pit stop phase. Yeah, um, firstly, Adam did a really good job today. I didn't expect him to be that quick. Uh, we kind of had a feeling in warm-up that he was three-stopping, and then I noticed immediately in the start of the race that for sure he's on a two-stop. I was just hoping he would pit before me. Um, and then I noticed near the end of the stint he was struggling a bit with his times and I, got, and I could get closer. Uh, and then it was critical that one extra lap. Um, I guess he had traffic on his outlap because he lost two seconds or something like that. And then after that it was pretty straightforward. Just keeping the gap and not making a mistake and just controlling the race. It did look a bit hairy for, for a second there when you, um, when you had your outlap, out, outlap after the second stop. You came out behind uh, Mishi Hoyer, who was yet to stop. And yes. It looked like it cost you a little bit of pace, but fortunately not too much. Yeah, I wasn't sure how long I then was going to stay out because my prime stint wasn't so great. Um, I struggled throughout the race within this year. Uh, I guess the railroad was higher than we thought. Um, and so I also didn't know how long Michi was going to stay out since he did pick quite late on the first stint. I tried to pass he had insane top speed and then luckily for me he pitted that lap i also did have contact with luke i think on the pit entry for my final pit stop yeah, we saw that and luckily i somehow stopped the car within the pit box yeah, Otherwise yeah that was pretty a, pretty, interesting. a pretty radical angle for that tire change uh-huh yeah well um again congratulations uh on the win leading out the strategy um Looking two weeks ahead, Manyeku, do you think uh, you can be as strong as well there? Um, I haven't driven Manyeku for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, I hope, I, or it should be at least. Um, I don't really think about, about that right now. Uh, hopefully my internet will be better th at that <laughs> race than this race. That's all I care about. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and good luck next week, of course. I think we also yes. have... Uh, we have Eros Mashuli with us. Yes, hi. Hi, man. Uh, congrats on the podium. Uh, great stuff. Um, is this your first podium after for, for this season or was it? 
Uh, it's the first of uh, this season, but I did I did uh, some podium before in uh, yeah, yeah. WC and uh, Ace. It was a difficult race, and uh, the pace was good for the first two stint, and uh, the last was bad, a bit for uh, too much fuel, a bit for uh, wrong tires, and a bit because I was managing uh, and uh, being uh, scared about uh, cuts, and uh, I did uh, a fight with Peter, and luckily I I locked up. It wasn't on uh, purpose. And uh, we go a bit wide, it was really good to avoid the uh, incident and after that was uh, was okay. Yeah, that was a pretty massive, a pretty massive uh, battle. We were, we were on board for a lot of that because um, when Peter Briak was attacking and trying to catch you, it was one of the most exciting battles on track at the time. So we, we rode with you guys for quite a few laps and he really threw everything at you and there were some fierce battles into the hairpin. And I know exactly the one you mean. You sort of um, came, you're on the inside and just, just managed to, to pull it up and pull it round. And uh, Peter had to just move to the left slightly. And after that, it looked like his, his tyres might have been done. But yeah, f fabulous defence there because Peter is, as we know, a pretty quick guy. Yes, it was a bit hard, but I would that uh, position. He would too. And uh, the inside uh, line... Uh, save uh, save my position and uh, but uh, I already talk uh, with him uh, because uh, I don't like this kind of uh, of move I did the mistake and it was really good it was better than me to avoid uh, uh, some bad uh, consequence mm. uh, really good stuff from him but uh, we know Peter he, he, he won uh, the last season here He's a very good driver, really fast, really fair. And uh, I already told him uh, thanks and uh, all was okay. It must feel pretty good to beat a, a driver of Peter's calibre, I guess, because he's, well, he's one of the legends. He's got the full set, pro champion, ace champion, world champion and finalist in the, um, in the Formula E Cloud Series event. So uh, to... To hold off a guy of that level must uh, must feel pretty good, Eros. Yes, yes, that was good. But I am not. Uh, I am happy for the result, but not much about the race. I I was uh, on the line to be in pole position in qualify, and uh, I missed the last sector. And uh, after I got overtaken by Stefanko, and uh, the pace was good the first two stint, but. Uh, the last one was not much uh, good. I I did a good qualify in uh, um, in the race uh, in which probably my pace was not so good. Other times I always uh, miss qualify, and uh, in race I have uh, a good pace, but uh, here is difficult to pass. So uh, I always finish uh, really far from uh, the guys in front also if the pace is good well well done and thank you very much for for coming in to have a chat uh, with us and so, so that the viewers can 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 hear you and get to know you a little bit thanks yeah and good luck as well uh next week or two weeks time of course thanks a lot um i think we still have one driver to go mr stefanko hey guys <coughs> Hi, hey martin what what a blow was that a disconnection um yes it was a disconnection so it's a it's a little bit of a disappointment you know, because the the pace was there you know p5 in qualifying wasn't too bad it wasn't the best lap but still it was okay and the start was good managed to get ahead of uh, Masculi into p4 and then um the alessandra crashed so i was in p3 the p3 was maximum but uh, you know uh they don't have luck on my side and I unfortunately had a 10 second uh, disconnection and uh, yeah that was it for me uh, r real shame because you you were you were driving. It looked to us like you were driving incredibly well. You had good pace. You were yeah you were in the fight there for certainly f fourth or third if uh, if things went well. So no nah, terrible shame and and uh, very very disappointing for for yourself and for the and for the viewers and the fans to not not see you duke it out to the end. 
Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, this season overall compared to to the last season when I was uh, when I was a rookie, it's a it's a big disappointment because so far out of these seven races, only one race went uh, the way we wanted. You know, whether it was uh, my mistakes or bad strategy calls or you know outside influence like internet. So um, yeah, so far it's 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 a big disappointment. But uh, hopefully we can turn that around in the in the second half of the season. Yeah, indeed. Well, the best best of luck uh, from us for the next event, and we hope that your your results can start to uh, start to show uh, where your talent is. Because certainly the results you've had so far, you haven't had a chance to really show what what you've got to offer. So, good good luck in in the future rounds. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I think it is time now to finally wrap it up for today. It's been a very very oh, uh, an exciting day. Your first pro championship, very exciting race, and the world championship just amazed me once again. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my co-commentators, Sergi and um, uh, David, of course, for joining me in the commentary booth, and the viewers as well. Um, and yeah, as I uh, said earlier already, the next race will be at Manicur. I don't know why this, uh, why this thing says it's the Austrian Grand Prix, it's the French Grand Prix. Um, little mistake there, no problem. Anyway, I hope to see you all in two weeks time. And until then, please take care.